Now, does it matter who Starmer is or was sleeping with or whether he has fathered any children outside his marriage? Arguably, no. On a personal level, I don't actually give a damn. But the chronic hypocrisy that has entered every aspect of his governance post-election and the double standards from a two-tier media, well, they certainly do matter. Why should we accept that the MSM will cover a Tory prime minister with completely different standards to a Labour one? They hounded. They hounded Boris Johnson over every tiny detail of his personal life. And once he became PM, every aspect of his relationship with Carrie Johnson or previous affairs or number of children, it was all considered fair game. The same approach has never been taken towards Keir Starmer, with the media agreeing to shroud his personal life in a cone of silence, despite the Westminster elites having been whispering about a series of salacious rumours for many years. Now, it's hardly a surprise when you look at these pictures of Starmer. With the Westminster press pack, these people are his friends, and friends protect each other. But on Friday morning, the excellent political journalist Isabel Oakeshott went on talk with Mike Graham and was more honest about the situation than any other political hack has been thus far. So I think there is something bigger going on here, and it's annoying because I don't know what it is. And I know that the lobby of political journalists at Westminster feel the same. Mm. Um, All of us instinctively feel that there is some big fact here that we're not being made. I mean, I'm going to ask the question because nobody else will. Is it some kind of sex thing, do you think? So there have long been rumours about Keir Starmer's private life. And they certainly aren't to do with any kind of doubts over his sexuality, if I can put it delicately. Um, They are to do with his past and what the shape of his family really looks like. And it wouldn't be fair to go any further than that. Mm. But this is an open secret at Westminster that those question marks have been around for a long time. And papers have been extraordinarily restrained in not publishing Mm. any of that speculation. And even whether they've got, you know, maybe there are publications that have more information than I'm aware of. They've been restrained. Why? because there's been a strong feeling that it's not in the public interest. And the bar for that these days for the press is really quite high. It's a whole different world to where we were in the John Major years. You know, all those sleaze scandals were really just to do with cabinet ministers having affairs, having mistresses. Right. That doesn't wash anymore in modern day Britain. People actually don't care. You know, if one of our cabinet ministers has got a relationship with someone else, who cares? As well, except, as well, except if it has some bearing on legislation, if it has some bearing on the conduct of, 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 of policy uh, or laws that are being made. I mean, that's when it starts to become a problem, isn't okay, it? So you have to have a strong public interest defence to publish mm. this stuff. And I think to date, um, the media has felt that there hasn't been a strong public interest defence. And mm. Fairness to Sir Keir Starmer, whatever may or may not be going on in in his past or in his private life, he has never posed with his family or children and acted like they're the perfect family and that he's the perfect dad and all of that, perfect husband, et cetera, et cetera. He hasn't done that. So there isn't, uh, hasn't up until now been any kind of hypocrisy public interest Mm. defence. I just wonder whether um, that is now shifting. I say, I don't kind of throw mud out there because I don't know much detail but I think it's fair to our viewers because we shouldn't have little clubs of journalists no. that know stuff and politicians that know stuff but we're in the know and you're not mm. so I'm happy to put it out there that it is an open secret at Westminster that there is something about Keir Starmer's past that is not in the public domain. And it may or may not have a bearing on all this Lord Alley stuff. It may be totally tangential, irrelevant, may not even be true. But if I were him and there is a secret, I would just get it out there now. Now, this evening, I can reveal that Lord Ashcroft did try to break the story about the shape of Starmer's family, the true state shape of Starmer's family, for one of his books, but was legally unable to. 
And if I am being sympathetic, many journalists and outlets may be too scared to report stories about Starmer's personal life because the only person who did so, the brilliant Tim Shipman of the Sunday Times, one of the few Westminster journalists that I actually respect, was successfully sued by the then Shadow Cabinet Office Minister Baroness Chapman over a tweet that she claimed falsely suggested that she had a, quote, secret adulterous relationship with Starmer. So on May the 8th, 2021, Shipman had said that loyalty to Baroness Chapman appeared to be, quote, the most important commodity as far as Labour High Command is concerned this evening. He later tweeted that Chapman had been banned from the Starmer's family home on, quote, the orders of Lady Victoria. But less than a fortnight later, he wrote on the platform, which is now known as X, some people may have inferred that I was suggesting a relationship between the two that is not purely professional. That was not its intention or context. Any such inference is untrue. I apologize for the distress caused. No disrespect was intended to anyone and particularly not to Ms. Chapman, to whom I have written and will pay compensation. But it still went to the High Court, where Baroness Chapman's solicitor, Kevin Benavia, said the inference from Shipman was that Baroness Chapman had been conducting a secret adulterous relationship with Sir Karma and allegate Sir Keir Starmer, an allegation that he said is completely untrue. Shipman is believed to have paid substantial damages and legal costs for those two tweets. So while Starmer did not take any legal action himself, the implication there was clear. Make allegations about the Labour leader's personal life at your peril. And this had all gone quiet. It had all gone quiet around Lady Victoria until she became the disappearing wife during the election campaign, again leading to speculation about the marriage. Now, Starmer's team explained his wife was helping their son study for his GCSEs, the same excuse used in the past week as to why the family moved out of their home to Ali's luxury penthouse. However, as soon as the rumours reached a critical mass, there was a surprising reversal, and Lady V was all of a sudden everywhere, dressed up to the nines and designer outfits that we now know were funded by Lord Ali's millions via donations. Since that public re-emergence, which you remember happened in this loved-up Instagram post at the Taylor Swift concert at Wembley, just another perk, by the way, that virtually every Labour cabinet minister appears to have taken up, she's now become a regular public entity. So I am told that a decision was made that Lady Victoria must go public to try and stop the growing speculation about Keir's marriage and the shape of his family that was also sparked by the removal of his wedding ring. The brilliant Guido Fawkes blog, which has shamed the MSM by revealing scoop after scoop about Starmer's sleaze since he became PM, had hinted at trouble too. So here's its editor, Paul Staines, speaking about this on the Bombshells podcast. During the election campaign, you were hinting a bit about, uh, well, Guido was hinting a bit about uh, Keir Starmer's personal life, but... We never got the story to fly. Well, no, more that no, yeah, everyone no was one talking else... About it. Yeah, well, yeah, but no one else was talking about this apart from Guido. Is that because journalists and editors want to stay on the side of the incoming government? Like, there was in a the bit case of that, of, and there was a bit of... You can't, those type of stories, you can never prove. Yeah, libel. you've got a photographer outside at night time and in the morning, shall we say. Yeah. So it's very like hard. Like I got him. Very, <laughs> very, hard to, very hard to stand up. Yeah. You know, um, and just because everyone knows or everyone says doesn't mean. Mm. It's tough. So we tried it from all different angles and mm. people enjoy, as uh, Lord Leveson said to me, a mosaic of information yeah. that could put it together. And, mm. you know, I think I think basically a lot of people knew what the Mail and the Telegraph were getting at when they were saying, where's Vicky, you know, yeah, and all that kind of stuff. You know, but where's look, the ring? Truth is, uh, <laughs> where's the ring? Uh, <laughs> he's truth, still not got it back on. Maybe he's just putting a bit of weight, you know, it happens. Uh, maybe he's following Prince William. He also doesn't wear a ring. Is that true? I don't, true. I don't wear a ring. Apparently, it's the traditional thing to do. Well, it's, I don't wear a watch, so oh, um, I don't like. Uh, I think I think uh, that story isn't over. yet. That story isn't over yet. The story about the shape 
of Starmer's family isn't over yet. The story about what's really going on in his marriage really isn't over yet. And certainly, all of the headlines about Lord Ali brings this into the public domain. And I think it's clearly in the public interest to know what's really going on. Now, Starmer has since attempted to guilt trip mainstream journalists away from coverage of the donor scandal, even though the PM and his key lieutenants had promised an administration free of sleaze and cronyism. And boy, oh boy, his client journalists are there to support him. Uh, who's probably the worst? I reckon Lewis Goodall of the No News Agents podcast. So when he was covering the Boris scandals at the BBC, this is what he wrote. This isn't a story about furnishings or wallpaper. It's a story about the law and the standards we expect in our democracy, about openness, transparency, and so on. Now, note the marked difference to his coverage of Starmer's scandal, where he posted on X, amid the mostly trivia freebie gate stories, the real story of the Labour conference was largely missed to the clearest signs, yet the government is going to shift fiscal and political approach and start talking about borrowing to invest. So it's actually been left to one of the only honourable MPs on the left in the UK, Canterbury's Rosie Duffield, to express the horror the nation feels about Starmer's dishonesty while quitting as a Labour MP on Saturday night. I think because interview after interview, Keir Starmer has had the opportunity to apologise, to disclose everything all at once and to just say, I hold my hands up, I made a mistake, I got it wrong, I can see how bad it looks. But instead, he's doubled down. He seems to be affronted when asked about it by journalists who are doing their job. This is a scandalous way to behave. None of us need free things. Even the lowest paid MPs, I've said this before, like me, are £91,000. That is so much money compared to the average British person who also has to provide clothes for themselves and their children. And if they want to go out, they want to buy tickets to a concert, they save up or they make that, that a present for somebody. The fact that those things are gifted to a prime minister who, as leader of the opposition, when he took most of these things, was earning about £140,000. It's disgusting. He has yet to apologise. He just seems cross when people dare to question him. And that is not only a really weird human attitude, it's also terrible politics. But it's now not just Starmer taking the piss, so too is the mainstream media, which is now actively shielding Starmer and covering up details of his private life when they tried to bring Boris down for far less. Because let me tell you, I've seen a lot of speculation online, but my understanding is that there is no injunction or super injunction that would stop any newspaper or journalist publishing the details of what they know. So where are you, Paul Brand? James O'Brien, Carol Vorderman, more proof, if ever we needed it, that two-tier Britain is served by a two-tier media. And now, let me bring in today's superstar panel. And to discuss this further, I'm delighted to welcome back my friend, the former Tory Education Minister, Dame Andrea Jenkins, and making his outspoken debut, the Reform UK London Assembly member, Alex Wilson. So Dame Andrea Jenkins, my view on this is that the MSM is engaging in a cover-up which exposes them as complete hypocrites because they cannot say that your friend Boris Johnson's personal life was of the public interest and deserved front page headlines and constant coverage in order to try and drive him out of Downing Street, but Keir Starmer's private life isn't in the public interest even though we know that he's taking donations for his family, for his wife's clothing, etc, etc. But first, it's the best time of year. Football is back. We're talking Premier League in the UK and in the US, NFL Sundays and college football Saturdays. With that, the glorious kind of fantasy football lineups is back too. So it's where you're in a manager comes alive, setting the perfect fantasy roster, screaming at your TV and making last minute waiver moves that either make you a hero or the guy everyone ridicules in the group chat. But listen, while you're over here making sure your fantasy team is dialed in, don't let your personal grooming become the guy that gets left on the bench. Because let's be honest, nobody wants to fumble their grooming routine. So that's where Manscaped's Performance Package 5.0 Ultra comes in, acting as your all-in-one grooming playbook. 
from keeping things sharp down below with the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra to taking care of those rogue ear and nose hairs with the Weed Whacker 2.0. This is the lineup that will keep you looking and feeling like a champ on and off the field. It will help you feel clean, confident and ready to dominate your fantasy league. The Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra Groin and Body Hair Trimmer is the franchise player of your grooming roster with precise trimming capabilities. It's reliable, efficient and gets the job done without fumbling. Whether it's for a date night, weekend tailgate, or just everyday grooming, this is the tool you want on your squad. And no one wants a surprise nose or air hair making a guest appearance on game day, right? So look at this. The Weed Whacker 2.0 handles those details like a pro, keeping you neat and ready to go. No missed tackles in your grooming game. And two free gifts today. The Boxers 2.0 Midnight Bravo and the Shed 2.0 Toiletry Bag Premium Gear to ensure you're always ready for action, whether at home or on the road. So join the over 10 million men. I'm one of them who trust Manscaped and get ready for kickoff by heading over to manscaped.com. All you need to do is use the code OUTSPOKEN, that's at checkout, and you'll get 20% off and free shipping. Trust me, you'll be drafting the real MVP of grooming this season. So 20% off and free shipping when you use the code OUTSPOKEN at www.manscaped.com. Stay on top of your grooming game and be ready for anything the season throws your way. Um, it is double standards, Dan, and I'm talking from personal experience. Back in 2015, I was a new BMP of just six months, a backbencher, and I got into a relationship with another backbencher. I ended up front page news of the Sun, of the Daily Mail, um, all the national media that was camped outside my mum's house. I lived with mum at the time. And um, and I was a backbencher. Why was that of public interest? And we got hounded. People even contacted ex-boyfriends from a decade ago, the media did. They contacted my elderly uncle who was old. They contacted um, ex-boyfriends, parents from a decade ago. So why was I of public interest, Dan, but not the prime minister? Indeed. And what what are you hearing about this, Andrew? Because I know you've just been at the Conservative Party conference. Yes. This is the talk, isn't it? Lots of people are asking questions about it there. Um, I mean, I didn't hear so much at the conference. I was only there for a day, but I've heard stuff from sort of friends who I know um, in the mainstream media, etc., cetera, um, and other politicians who have, have said that it's a well-known secret, exactly what Isabel said, um, that it's allegedly relationship-wise um, and... So, yeah, I mean, to me, I don't want to be sued as somebody who's got no money and trying to get a job done. But yes. I think the mainstream media, who clearly um, has, has got lawyers and that behind them, why go after a backbencher like me back in 2015, who was, you know, nobody, let's face it. Why and camp outside my house? Um, why go after Boris and just hound him for... For years, um, yet they um, allegedly stay silent over Mr. Starmer, mm. our prime minister. Because, because you're very good friends, I know, with Carrie as well as Boris Johnson, Andrea, and those stories took a real toll on them, didn't That's they? It's awful. It's awful. They got so personal, even about arguments that they supposedly had. And... I mean, I personally don't care what somebody does in their personal life, as long as it doesn't involve children or animals, Dan, <laughs> as long as it's legal. But the fact is, it's hypocrisy. And you cannot have double standards in the media reporting. You cannot have um, hypocrisy and double standards from our prime minister as well, like, like we've been seeing over allegedly sleaze of the Tory party. Yet what are they like? You know, they're the worst offenders. So you cannot throw a stone if you're not clean yourself. Alex Wilson, great to have you on the show for the first time, Reform UK London Assembly member. Are you hearing anything about all of these rumours to do with Starmer and the shape of his family and the state of his marriage? Well, Dan, I have to thank you for bringing me as closely up to speed as, as anyone can. Um, see, the, the intro that you've just given to, to this piece um, has you know, mentioned several things, and uh, but it's still as, as clear as mud, really. Um, and uh, yeah, honestly, don't know where to begin. Um, I think when we have a, a new government that's come in and, and promising to be you know, clear of, of sleaze and cronyism and, and all those things, um, to then very, very quickly uh, return to what seems like politics as normal, 
Um, it's why a lot of people are getting utterly disengaged in politics. And you, know, you saw the turnout at the election was lower than, than it has been for some considerable time because people just think that their politicians on all sides um, are not relatable and not honest and not straightforward. Uh, why engage in a process when it certainly gives the appearance of them all being the same? What we need to do is offer some real choice and, and re-engagement and get people fired up again. And I think to do that, yeah, talk about sleaze and, and corruption and cronyism and all these things. It, it, it really doesn't help that. But to try to get back onto, onto kind of real issues and, and talking about mm. how politics can and should make a real difference to people's lives and, and the issues that, that, that matter. And that's what government should be focusing on. But in the meantime, the longer this goes on, the worse it gets. Well, indeed, Alex, because the problem is, you know, your boss, Nigel Farage, is another one absolutely hounded by the mainstream media constantly, yep. consistently. And that's unfair too, if yeah. they're covering up for Starmer. Because let's be honest, every, every tiny thing Nigel does, whether he's going somewhere, where he's earning money from, I mean, it's considered front page news all the time. No, absolutely. So we have two-tier care, we have two-tier media, and, and we have two-tier led by donkeys. You know, where are they in all this? Um, yes. yeah, if it was Nigel, they'd be, they'd be all over it. And, uh, and, it, and it's ridiculous. Um, the, the things that Nigel gets criticised for are you know, going out, earning a living, um, paying a lot of tax on his earnings, you know, making a big contribution to, to the national and international discussions on all sorts of issues. Yeah, that should be celebrated, but uh, you know, not, not, uh, not hidden like this. No, indeed. Do you have any sympathy for Starmer, though, I'll, I'll, I'll put this to both of you. Andrew, let me let me ask you first. He's he's obviously very concerned about protecting his children, right, who are at a vulnerable age. Yeah. Do you have any sympathy for him on that level? No, I, I have sympathy for anybody who's got children. And um, I mean, as you know, Dan, I've got little Clifford, who you know as well, and you do your best to protect them. And when I got hounded, thankfully, I wasn't even born then. Um, but yes, of course, I have sympathy on a human level. Um, but if he's got nothing to hide, come out and say it. And because the speculation will keep um, snowballing and um, something will come out in the end. So isn't it better to nip things in the bud now? Alex, what about you? Any sympathy for Starmer over this? Um, given think, um, given what um, went on may have happened many many years ago. Yeah, I think um, I think it's fair to have sympathy with with the fact with his family and his children and so on. But but ultimately, um, all of us that are involved in politics, we choose to put ourselves in the public eye. Um, and if we do that, knowing that there are things about us and, and about our past that uh, that may or may not be um, you know helpful to, to to be come out, well, that's a choice that we make. Um, and it's it's never the uh, the actual offence or, or the or the. You know, the difficulty that gets you it's always the cover-up that gets you so i think um if there is something then i think uh it would be in his best interest to to be be clear and, and, and honest and open about it in the meantime dan isabel you know people are, you, you know, keep pushing and uh and maybe we'll get the answers that we're looking for um, dan can i come in i've just yes, been please. looking on angela rayner's tweets um while i'm while i was on here that's why i was looking down and this is how much they hounded, um, she in particular hounded Boris. In 2019, um, she was quoting about Boris Johnson that Adam Bienkoff um, had done a tweet having a go about um, Boris. And, and Raina said, I've met guys like him before. He thinks he's a cut above the rest, says all the I love yous and gets a girl pregnant. Oh my goodness. <laughs> That's so... the thing, they went down and dirty. And now uh, that their absolutely. leader's got a dirty secret, they all of a sudden want to pretend that it's nobody's business. Well, why I'm was Boris's saying, you know, love child's anyone's business? Exactly. So she was getting personal about Boris's life and, and having a child. And, and that's wrong. You know, if they have got a, a secret to hide, whatever it is, as I said, don't cast these stones yeah. down. Well, I mean, I find it astonishing, Andrew, a bit like you talk about your own personal experience. There are a whole load of lies put out about me last year, as you know, and it was complete nonsense, complete witch hunt, completely untrue. And there's been more mainstream media focus on that, Andrea, than there has been on Starmer's secret, which is just completely astonishing. 
but they're in they're, they're in it for him, aren't they? Because if you also look yes. at the revelations regarding Lord Ali, I mean, where has the mainstream media been on that? It's Guido Fawkes that is revealing that this guy is a massive supporter or was a massive supporter of Assad in Syria. It's Guido Fawkes that is revealing yeah. the fact that Number 10 told complete lies about the fact that Starmer had only filmed in Lord Ali's a penthouse once it was multiple times and the worst thing is look I, I this is the picture that's astonishing to me andrea look he cheated yeah. the public by putting his family pictures behind his shoulder to make uh, it look as if he was recording yeah. from his own house when he was telling all of us to stay home mm, absolutely and it's it's hypocrisy and it's deceit then and somebody like that should not be in government personally i think you know, if you, nobody's perfect, but but people always get found out by the lies, Dan. So this is just a matter of time yeah. now, I think. Well, see, for me, Alex, all of these stories are actually about hypocrisy. That is what it is all about. Labour acted completely hysterically for five years. And they brought Andrea's government down, let's just be completely frank about it, over a cake a piece of cake, which Boris Johnson has actually now said in his autobiography, he didn't even eat. He didn't even taste a piece of cake. And fundamentally, that is what destroyed the last Conservative government because the moment that Boris was deposed at the behest of the left-wing mainstream media, it was all over. It was all done. So if you are going to maintain those sorts of standards for the opposition, you sure as hell better be whiter than white yourself. And that we've actually seen, Alex, I yeah. think, the worst of champagne socialists, which is that they talk a good talk, but actually they are constantly on the take. Absolutely. It's the very kind of definition of champagne socialism. Champagne for me, socialism for everyone else. And uh, and that's um, simply not acceptable. But um, you're right, it's, it's the hypocrisy. And uh, and it's great that... that you and Guido are doing the work that you do in asking these questions. If the mainstream media are not prepared to do it, then someone has to. And uh, you know, good luck and keep keep doing it. But, but um, lockdown in particular, I think, is quite sickening. The hypocrisy over lockdown. Yeah, it was it was lockdown that uh, that drove me out of the Conservative Party because I thought it was utterly yes. wrong. Uh, particularly second lockdown. Good on you. Um, and for, for people who were supporting lockdown, uh, whether on the, the then government or on the now government, um, who at the time were arguing for deeper, harder, faster, longer, uh, to be potentially having breached the rules themselves in, in while telling us all to, to you know, buckle up and, and lock ourselves away for months on end. Absolutely outrageous. Yeah. But this isn't the first time that Keir and Angela Rayner have lied over their conduct, specifically in regards to lockdown. Do you remember Beargate? when they were hounding Boris Johnson. But in fact, they were eating Indian takeaways and partying and downing bottles of beer when they were uh, meant to be in lockdown. So even when it comes to COVID restrictions, there was a complete double standard in terms of the media and the police's treatment of the Labour Party compared to the Conservative Party, Andrea. Yeah, and on that point, actually, I think I was on your role show, Dan, discussing this. Um, do you remember how we, well, I think you uncovered how a, was it a police and crime commission or, or somebody high up in that particular police force that was um, investigating it got a pay rise during that time? Yes. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I and remember, I remember what, um, Angela Rayner said she wasn't even stand. there. No, absolutely. And this is what you and I cannot stand hypocrisy and, and everybody should be treated the same under the rule of law. You should be treated the same as anybody else and be innocent until proven guilty. Um, it, you know, look what happened to you, Dan. And it's wrong. It's totally. wrong that people um, who on the left can get away with things. And, it, well, and it's been going on too long now. And I do think that the mainstream media actually owe it to the general public to restore trust in them as well um, to start reporting on these things. Well, to me, it's gone. To me, the trust in the mainstream media is gone. I mean, look at that guy. Look at that guy. Every single day, James O'Brien tries to yeah. justify this despicable conduct. So does Carol Vorderman, who we're going to be speaking about later in the show. Mm -hmm. So I believe the trust in the mainstream media has gone.
gone. And that is why it is going to be independent journalists. I mean, Isabel Oakshop, for example, she has now launched a Substack. I've written about this on my Substack today. Guido Fawkes is an independent platform. Mm. That's who you can trust. You cannot trust the British Bashing Corporation or Woke ITV or Sly News or Channel 4 News to tell you the truth about what is really going on in this administration. Thank you so much for watching Dan Wilson Outspoken. Please do subscribe if you want lots more clips and interviews like that. Plus, if you want to watch our totally uncensored after show, then visit www.outspoken.live.